sadly for the most part, the second week of the Six Nations is going to be remembered for all the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. The results mostly went the direction that you thought it would, but it could have mm -hmm. so easily have gone much differently over the weekend, mm -hmm. with probably two of the results going the other, other way, based on mm -hmm. what actually happened on the field. The results, pretty straightforward. S Scotland mm -hmm. sadly firstly lost to, uh, to France 16 20. Mm -hmm. Then it was uh, Wales up against England. Uh, Wales mm -hmm. narrowly losing to England by 16 to 14. And then mm -hmm. Ireland just running away with it 36 to 0. No issues. Let's have a look at these in reverse. So, first, having a look at uh, Ireland versus Italy. Ireland were just mm -hmm. superb again. It's almost becoming boring uh, reporting on Ireland at the moment, even though the, the brand of rugby that they're playing is far from boring. The two things that I'm just most amazed by when it comes to Ireland is, first of all, uh, they're still able to keep their discipline no matter how the game goes. Whether it's an easy game, a difficult game, uh, where it has the chance to actually start to unravel, they don't let that happen. They keep strict discipline and the yellow cards just don't come. Mm. So there's something amazing just in terms of how they manage their defense mm. overall. The second one is that they actually have the ability to kind of remove themselves mm. from whatever is happening around them in the rugby world. So whether it's controversy mm. or drama or uh, accusations, it doesn't matter to the Irish side. They get down to business and they make sure that the job gets done. And they did it superbly in this uh, victory against Italy. At the current trajectory that mm -hmm. they are on. I don't see uh, any of these other five teams actually coming close to Ireland. Probably not going to happen in 2025 either and I would not be shocked if they remain untouched all the way through to the next World Cup in 2027. In the England-Wales game, Wales fought, fought really bravely and I'm sure that most of the English supporters count themselves lucky with that win. The game was however marred by the first of the or oh, some of the bad mm -hmm. video refereeing uh, overall. Uh, if you have a look at the Oli Chisholm uh, high hit that they sanctioned him for, uh, you have to be honest. If you slow down, slow enough, and if you have a look at just the still image, yeah, it looks damning. That is the case with many of these types of uh, situations. But if you're going to be fair, that is going to be the situation then probably resulting in 20 yellow cards in a game. Uh, if they are cited properly, which doesn't suit anybody. Uh, if you hire a player at normal pace, you can see that it was very minor. And I understand you have to have a look after head injuries, but that is not the way that you do it. That way you just discourage uh, what we really like about the physicality and um, strength with strength that you get from a from a proper rugby match. Mm -hmm. and the second one is Mason Grady. Uh, if you have a look at the his reaction, he didn't really have time to react to that deliberate knock-on that got him sinbind. Uh Yeah, I think you should actually take a, a leaf out of the book of football at the moment, where if somebody bullets in a, a volley from a couple of feet out and it touches somebody's hand, they really have a look at it and see if that person had any chance to react or had any way of um, not having their hand in the way. And then logic prevails. So they allow for a little bit of common sense to also play along in this whole thing. The Scotland versus France game was uh, more of a slugfest than anything else. It wasn't the most beautiful game of rugby that I've seen in a while. And there was a defined Scotland on that field, even though they weren't flawless. And yeah, far from it. Uh, they put up a masterful fight. And that was against a very error prone France. Some other reason. Uh, the result from last week didn't inspire the French to actually take a step up, which I thought they would have done, but that was definitely not the case. With that being said, you must give some credit to uh, Scotland. They actually forced a couple of those errors, in my opinion. Uh, so it wasn't just all down to France playing badly. It was actually a tenacious defence from uh, the Scottish side. But then we get to the controversial part, that try at the end. If you have a look at that try, yes, at first it is in the air, but then you can clearly see it goes down and it hits the ground. And there's enough evidence from enough angles that most people who viewed that knew instantly, yep, that was a try of Scotland's winning this game. But the weird thing is, even though after the referee viewed that and 
he was convinced that it was a try. He was talked out of it by the uh, TMO officials. So they were so stuck up in a, a specific law that common sense was just out the window. Now, if we're going to go that far down the rabbit hole in terms of the common sense, then we're just going to kill the game completely. Then you need to look at things like that Elliot Daly uh, pass that he had to Fraser Dingwall uh, for that important try. Didn't that drift a little forward? It looked like it, but uh, with the momentum, it's silly to kind of uh, blow that. In the same way, uh, George Ford, did he take a step as part of his kick or did he just adjust a little bit to the side before he went for his conversion kick? I think it was the latter and he should, it should have not been allowed that, he, uh, that, they could, that the Welsh could charge it. So it's a difficult one because I know there was a lot of controversy, uh, controversy around the Cheslin Colby charge down as well against France. So these things are, are a little difficult at the moment to adjudicate. But common sense is that looks like it's the one losing out more often than not. Now, uh, one thing that I just find very interesting is that there were a couple of English supporters that I saw that were interviewed uh, late in uh, on Saturday, and they were asked about that Scottish college try. Their answers were yes, it was definitely a try. And this comes from the same England supporters that have had to watch their team be on the wrong side of the Calcutta Cup for a couple of years now, but they just know what is right and what is wrong. And it was simple for all of them to see that as everybody else thought that was a try. So I'm just wondering uh, exactly how far is this TMO going to go and when is the power going to go back into the hands of the referee? Because we need it in the hands of the referee so that uh, he can make a common sense adjudication, have a look at things in real time, have a look at things based on the evidence that is served and not get stuck in some semantics where uh, something then isn't allowed or is allowed where it shouldn't have been. Mm -hmm. Let's hope the, after the little break that they've mm -hmm. got now mm -hmm. uh, that the third round of the Six Nations is one that is actually remembered for all the right reasons.